Hey there, everyone. We are back today with another gaming video. That's that's rare, but we are uh, we're going to be talking about uh, well, since the last video about uh, my favorite PSP games uh, was you know relatively well dis received, I figured I'd do the other PlayStation uh, portable hands handheld. Uh, <laughs> that would be the PSP, the PlayStation Portable. Um, and, but I my library of games for the PSP is like enormous. It's I have like a maybe three times, four times the size of my Vita library. So this time I'm gonna do ten my ten favorite games because it was hard to narrow it down to five. But these are various games. Um, the the type of game is much more varied. I think maybe not whatever. But also. Um, the number of games is much more. Uh, the PSP has an enormous library. It's much bigger than the Vita's, but um, it also has like a ton of great games. So uh, we're just going to look at a few of my favorites. Again, these aren't the best rated games or anything. Um, and a lot of them are uh, probably not games most people will like, but they're the games I had the most fun with and the games I spent a lot of time with. So... Let's get into these. We've got uh first one here is these aren't in any particular order by the way. I didn't I just this is the order that I pulled them out from my shelf. So this first game is Zittai Zitsume Toshi 3, which is whatever, you know, like the English the English translation for this series came became like uh Raw Danger and something else. I don't remember what the English names are. But in Japan, these are all Zittai Zitsume Toshi, which is... They're basically like a survival game where there's some kind of natural disaster happening. Some kind of disaster is going on and you have to survive by drinking water and <laughs> avoiding uh, earthquakes or some shit. So, like, it depends... Well, I mean, it's different for each game. That's why I'm not being vague. But, like, in this one specifically, you're avoiding an earthquake. Um, so you're on a big island and there's... A giant earthquake that like is basically splitting the whole town apart so you're trying to escape while this town is like you know ripping apart and you know so there's a big earthquake and like half the town is split in half basically and then there's like tons of aftershocks so like your things are constantly falling so you know you're like trying to avoid being crushed by buildings or being like falling off things or being like crushed in tunnels or you know um running out of water or running out of uh, food or, you know, saving people or not saving people. What It's up to you, I guess. But uh, this game is a lot of fun. This is the third one. It's pretty rare. Um, but it's on the... See, like, the thing that would happen is Irem, who is the maker of this game, decided not to make games anymore after, like, the great... <laughs> like, they were... They had made a fourth one of these, like, right at, right around the... That was, like, supposed to come out, like, two weeks uh, after the... Uh, you know, like, it was supposed to come out, and two weeks before it was going to come out, the giant earthquake happened in Japan, and they, they were like, oh, guess we can't do that now. So they just scrapped the whole game and stuff And, like, in turn stopped developing games entirely so irem basically was just like nope we're done with games done so but the fourth one of this uh series did come out eventually by uh granzella i believe is the developer which is like the basically the games people from irem decided okay i guess we'll start our own studio and that was it and they were basically trapped making games for playstation home for like <laughs> five years and then they finally put out a game but uh that, that's my uh, one on the pile here. Next one, uh, we've got Akiba's Trip. Now, this game is stupid, <laughs> but um, it came out on other systems later. I think it might even have an English release. Um, maybe it's on the Vita. I'm not sure. I, only, I never played any of the later ones. I only played it on the Vita. I mean, on the PSP. And it's goofy. It's like, basically, it's, you're fighting vampires, and the way you defeat the vampires is to expo expose them to sunlight by uh, tearing off their clothes. So, like, you get in battles, you get in, like, it's kind of like beat em up fights where, you know, you'll go... It's, in, in essence, this is kind of like uh, 
beat em up RPG, basically. You you know, you'll go into areas and there'll be a bunch of people you have to fight in a kind of beat em up style and like you'll you have bosses also like a beat em up. But instead of just beating people up, you do beat people up, but you also have to do, do like clothing tears where it rips off their clothes. It's not it, you know, it's, it's goofy and it's kind of dumb, but like when you play it, it's fun. Like, it's goofy fun. It's not, like, as perverted as you'd think because it's not like there's, like, crazy nudity or anything. It's just, like, you know, once their clothes come off, they're basically turned black and disintegrate. So it's not, <laughs> it's not like, uh, super, um, you know, eventually, like, it'll be people, like, running around in, like, underclothes. But, like, it's not a, uh, you know, you know how that is. You know how the, you know how those games do. Anyway, uh, the next one is, uh... Okay, this is Zit Zitai Hero Project in Zitai Hero Project in English. I think that's what they called it. Z Z H P. I'm not sure. It's uh um. I think I th it's Zitai Hero Kozo Keikaku maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, this is a game. That is developed by Nipponichi, and it's kind of a roguelike. You go through, and you're kind of like a superhero, a like a tokusatsu hero, and you have to fight a bunch of, you know, villains in each stage. And that, like, what happens is you, as you go through, you kind of get stronger and stronger. So you have to go through and de defeat the enemies. You'll you'll level up and stuff, but like once you die, you have to start over from the beginning. Um, it's a, it's a roguelike, but, uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's like a roguelite. <laughs> so it's good though. It's goofy and it's fun and it has like a ton of different endings and, you know, it sounds bad. It sounds like, oh my God, I'm going to be playing this forever. It's not, it's not really that long. Um, it's not an incredibly long game and even getting the new endings is like you get them once you're able to get them, you can get them really quick. It's basically just like playing through the game one more time to get like 10 more endings. Um, because like every time, what'll happen is like every time you'll beat a stage, you'll get a new ending and because you're doing something different. So, but whatever, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good game. It, I had a lot of fun with it. I think it has like a goofy tone and it's sort of like an underrated game on the PSP. So whatever it's called in English, ZH something, Z I think it's a Zeta Hero Project, but I'm not sure. Um, next we've got Final Fantasy Tactics. Now, of course, this is a PS1 game originally, but the PSP version is, like, basically a different game. I mean, it's got enough changes to be, like, um, somewhat, you know, feel like a different game. It's obviously, like, the, the battles are pretty much the same. But there's, like, you know, other stuff to do, and there's, you know, there's, like, uh, animated cutscenes that are really cool in this, uh, there's there's extra stuff. There's a lot of extra stuff in this that is different from the PS1 game. So, and also this kind of game is kind of perfect to play in a handheld because like you can play it in short burst. You know, you can play like one battle and then just put it down. And like if you're just grinding for stuff, you can just play a short grind battle, put it down, come back later, do something else. It's it's a good game to play in a handheld. So that's why I'm choosing it as a PSP game instead of a PS1 game. Um I guess I should do a PS1 group, but, like, again, like, a lot of my favorite games on the PS1 are also on the PSP, and, like, the PSP versions are usually updated in a way that makes them better. So, whatever. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, you guys know what it is. Get it, play it, it's good. Um, especially on the PSP, I think it's good. Um, but, it, you know, in a pinch, feel free to play it on PS1 with the crazy loading times. Uh, um, next we got... This is Kurohio 2, which is Black Panther. It's like a kind of... Wait, is it Panther? It's not Black Panther. That's It's like Black Leopard, I guess. It's a Hyo. Hyo is Leopard, I think. So, like, Kurohio would be Black Leopard. And this is basically a Yakuza game with with different characters. It's um, a different type... It's the same type of game, just with a different type of character. Which... You know, they've done a bunch now with uh, the Yakuza series, so, like, um, if you like... Okay, 
the thing with this one is the reason well, I'm picking two because it's got more stuff than one, but one is still a great game. One of my favorites on the PSP. I bought the PSP to get this game, not this one, but the first one. And then like this game also, um, you know, takes all the stuff they did in one and ramps it up. So it's good. It's, it's, it's better than one, but one is still awesome. Um, but the, what this game does is, like, it has a different battle system than your standard Yakuza game. So Yakuza has a system where it's kind of like a, a beat-em-up. So you'll run, run around the streets. Sometimes you'll run into, like, random battles with people and you just, you know, fight it out on the street. But this game has that, except when you fight, it goes into, a, like, a different kind of screen where you have, like, a different type of fighting style. And unlike Yakuza, where you have a set fighting style for your character, it's specific to the story here, but, like, the character can learn, like, a million different fighting styles, and you can, like, mix and match them to be, um, you know, so, like, you can learn some kind of kung fu or something, and you're just like, oh, I like that kung fu punch, I'm going to keep that as my punch for, you can assign attacks to the buttons, so, like, you can learn you know, uh, boxing or like savat or something. And then you'll be like, okay, I can take the kicks from savat and I can take punches from boxing. And then I can take like throws from jujitsu and you'll be like this cool fighter. And you get this like cool way to set up your character and you can do lots of different ways to fight people. And, you know, of course, like the different styles are more effective against certain types of enemies. So sometimes there's big enemies or, that require different types of attacks to like break their guards or whatever easier. Um, you know, but it's it's such a fun fighting style. I wish the main series Yakuza games would add, like, the same kind of, like, customization for the fighting styles, because that would be awesome. Um, so I really liked the way this works, but also it works like a normal Yakuza game, except, like, the cutscenes are these kind of weird um, animated things that are, uh, like, watercolory. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. There's not a good picture on the back that I can show you. Maybe if you look really close to the top there, it's like watercolor almost. But um, this game was a lot of fun. I had a ton of fun with this game. And I hope they make more of these on handhelds. Like, I hope um, Sega decides to, like, make a Kurohyo 3 for, like, the Switch maybe. I don't know. I guess that would come out on everything. If it was going to come, if they were going to, like, put it on the Switch, they are going to put it on everything. But, uh... You know, there's not, like, that's, <laughs> that's that's the deal, I think. But whatever. I, I hope they make more of those. I'm, I'm good with more. Uh, more Yakuza anything, though. Um, next, we're going to look at a different game. Uh, this is uh, Seventh Dragon 2022. And I'm picking two for the same reason that I picked Kurohyo, Kurohyo 2. The first one, awesome. This one has just like a few more character classes and some other stuff you can do, which, may, which makes it fun. This is like a uh, an RPG, which is kind of like a cyberpunk RPG in, a, in the sense that it's like somewhat in the future. You've got like uh, the world has been taken over by the dragons, but like, it, you know, like these character classes. I wish I could remember what they are. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the character class is. Just look at the manual. Um, but they're, you know, they're like a DJ or something. There's like a, a bunch of different, um, you know, there, there's, they're kind of cyberpunk-ish character classes. Where are, where are the character classes? Um, but anyway, this series also has like, you know, it's got like Vocaloid, like it's, there's Hatsune, Hatsune Miku is in the game. Like, I don't, I don't believe you can use her as a fighter but she is in the game and does stuff um it's got like you know you, it's basically the seventh dragon formula if you played seventh dragon on ds it's like a medieval rpg where you're you have to kill like hundreds of dragons like the first seven dragon is like that they went overboard with the dragons this one it has like 250 or something dragons you have to kill and that sounds like a lot but uh, the first one had like 420. So like, it, it was like nuts. It got to a point where it wasn't fun. Okay, so here are the... Oh, wait, maybe not. Okay, yeah, here are the, the classes. You've got samurai, which is kind of like... Um, it's, they're like a tech samurai. It's like a street samurai from um, Shadowrun. And you've got a trickster who 
I think the trickster has some kind of like uh he's like a thief, but the trickster is like breaks this game. It's kind of, <laughs> it's like the best character. Um you've got a destroyer. Um they're kind of like a street tough. You got a psychic um hacker. The hacker I think has like a DJ DJ equipment when he uh, when they do stuff. And there's an idol which can they do singing attacks, which it, it's mostly buffs and debuffs. They're like a bard. Um, so like you you got your idol, which is like your bard. Your hacker is kind of like a mage. Uh, psychic is also like a different type of mage. Um, a destroyer is like a fighter. Trickster is like a thief. Uh, samurai is like a different kind of fighter. It's basically it. You you only have three members of your party, but you can like mix mix and match at any time. So. Um, but in, especially in the first game, like it, there's like the trickster abilities, like <laughs> just break the game. Like it makes it way too easy, but, uh, it's, it's less, it's less, less bad in 2020, but, uh, it's still really good. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this game. I played it for a really long time. Um, killed every dragon. Um, t you know, it's, it's kind of good. I don't know if these ever came out in English. I don't. Maybe the third one came out in English. I think that came out on 3DS. Um, maybe, I don't know. But the this the, the ones on the PSP, I, I like more than the third one. So, whatever. Third one. This, the, this is actually... this is, It's 2022. It's actually the third game in the series. But uh, three is the fourth. You know. Uh, next, we've got uh, Shining Blades... Oh, Shining Blade is a Shining Force game. Um, this one is, uh, there's a bunch of Shining Force games on the PSP. I, I've talked about them all on this channel. But uh, Shining Blade was the one I liked the most. It was the best one. The first one was kind of like Bread Shop Simulator plus Sometimes Fighting. Uh, and the th third one, Shining Arc, was like a low rent version of this one, which was awesome. Uh, this one had characters that showed up in other games in the series also. So like... Um, I don't remember which game it was. Shining Wind, maybe, that the characters sh sh from that show up in this game. And, like, the characters, the main characters in this one are, are like, related to those characters. But this had a good story. had a great battles. Uh, I have very little complaints about Shining Blade. Um, I really enjoyed playing it. It was, like, a shock that it was so good, actually. Um, so, yeah... I don't know if this, also, I don't know if this has an English version or a translation somewhere, but if it does, play Shining Blade. Um, next we've got, this is Goku, Goku Makaimura, which is, I don't, ultimate ghosts and goblins or ghouls and ghosts, whatever it is. Um, but this one, uh, is actually Goku Makaimura Kai, which is not... This one didn't come out in the U.S. Um, this is a retooled version of the game. So if you ever, if you played this on the PSP, you might have thought, like, well, it's kind of different from your standard Ghosts and Goblins game, or Ghouls and Ghosts. What it, I don't know. I honestly can't remember which one is the correct one. <laughs> but uh, it's... It's... Different if you play the original one, but this one um, offers the the kind of a new version that's more like the way that the original game plays. It has like a more uh, standard way of progressing that you would think for like how this series works. So what happened was I think they released that one and people liked it, but they were like, you know, we just kind of wanted a good... Uh, Ghouls and Ghosts game that uh, was like the old Ghouls and Ghosts game. And Capcom was like, okay, we'll make it for you. And then they took all the assets and just basically redid the game in the standard way instead of like having it sort of Metroidvania-y for the uh, original version. But this has both versions on it. So like it has the new kind of remixed version that makes it more like a classic game, which I prefer actually. I just prefer the new version. But... Uh, it also has the um, original version, so like if you can find this, it's worth it because like you don't really need to know the Japanese to to know how to play this game, and you get you'll get the uh, the the remastered version. So uh, good game. Uh, 
and we've got next we've got persona 2 that I, i'm showing both because they're like basically one game but um man these on the psp are so good um this game is my favorite persona game it's straight up my favorite persona game i love the story for this game i love the characters um especially in this one um but even this one they're good so let's talk about persona 2 because the story is my favorite it's you know it starts out in persona 2 you start out as um you start out as like you know same kind of persona setup you've got high school care high school kids who are get personas and they're fighting some kind of evil force it's Yarlet Hotep but um in this case like the first game you play through the entirety of it with your high school characters and there's other side characters that they meet throughout the game you know there's kind of like people that they can rely on for help sometimes and people that have like minor parts in the game and what will happen is like the main character you'll go through with the main character and there is they basically get to the end and they're just like oh we can't win we no matter what we do we lose so they kind of decide like okay i guess we gotta we gotta reset everything so they like reset the universe in a way that like um changes some parts of history and the only person who can remember is the main character when they go into the second half so you've got Sumi and Batsu, which is like sin and punishment. But um, when they go into the second half, the main character is uh, not the main character from the first game. He's just kind of a side character in the game. He's like a part of your party that will sometimes come and sometimes leave and do other stuff by himself. But, um, you know, then you have a full adult cast. It's totally different from all the other Persona games in that, like, all of your characters who are using their personas are like adults. They have adult problems. They have jobs they go to. Um, you know, they they have like adult concerns and adult like, you know, it's not like they're going to school, right? They they have jobs. The, the, the main character is like a photographer. One of the other characters is like one of her coworker friend type people. And there's like some other crazy people that are also part of their group, but you know, eventually they and the main character from the first game also joins. But this game is like a, it's it's a really cool thing where you know you have this story and it's it's it might seem like a waste to not to play this one, but it's such a good story and the connections between this one where you can see like what happened from the what they changed in the first one to like what happened with the characters and how things worked out differently um it's really interesting so you get this kind of like weird parallel story going on but you also get um you know a good uh story out of each side and this one i think i just am uh because because i'm an adult i like adults um so uh this story with adults as the main characters is so much more fulfilling for me like it feels more realistic um feels more relatable and you know there's like a hitler in this game it's uh <laughs> you get to you get to murder hitler you can't go wrong it's got everything that makes a good game good you uh you've got good characters good story you kill nazis you kill hitler you you've done it so persona 2 best persona uh the the game is like works entirely different from all the other persona games though um y you like don't m merge personas there's none of that it's like you get personas through kind of negotiation and, and doing other things and then like you level them up and you can uh, once they're at max level, you can transform them into items that you need, maybe, or special items that you can use to upgrade your stuff, or special items that you can use to gain abilities and skills. It's totally different from the way... Um, because, okay, think of it this way. You have, like, five people in your party also, so, like, you have different kinds of 
stuff going on where like they eat they each have like special things and special quests that you have to do in special dungeons and it's all like um third person dungeons like top down third person <laughs> like it's not it's not like first person like the first persona and it's not like 3D like the uh 2D I think it's 2D it might not be it might be isometric I don't remember um it's probably isometric battles are isometric they're turn based isometric whatever not important and final game this is my one of my favorite games ever it's uh ore no shikaba no koete yuke or the uh second one that i talked about on the vita is ore shika something something i don't remember you guys told me but i totally forgot already um but this is one of my favorite games on this system on the ps1 ever it's just like uh just such a good game such a great game and this one specifically is it's if you've played or uh Orishka on the uh, vita and you thought like eh, it's kind of all right but it's not great like i could see people saying that but um it's slightly different in ways that i could understand that this one though is so good and so much better it's not like uh i don't want to say like it's so much better and that one is terrible like because that one is awesome also but this one is like uh like legendary status it's so incredibly good um and what it what it does is it it makes like it takes like your concept of how the game, uh, how an RPG would work, and just breaks it. It just thinks like anything you think of, like how you would play an RPG, like doesn't work for this game. It's just not. It's not something. It like they take all the rules and just break them and just make it weird. So, for example, you make characters, you make a party, and the party will die after like a year and a half basically so the party all dies but they can kind of as they as you fight battles and gain abilities you can start breeding with gods and they'll give you children and those children will join they'll ace hyper age so like the reason you die is because your bloodline is cursed and you can't live more than like a year and a half so what will happen is you know you'll have a kid with a god a kid will be born and in three months, they're basically uh, an adult old enough to fight in your party. So, like, um, what happens is you'll have, like, uh, two or three months where you can train them. And you, they'll train as, like, some type of cl character class. And, you know, as the generations go, your characters get stronger. But it's not just that. Because they don't just get stronger. They get faster. And that sounds dumb because, like, what does that mean? It means they're physically faster. That would, What it means is that, like, when you go into a stage at the, in the early parts of the game, your characters are too slow to make it to the end of the stage. Like, even if you know exactly where to go and you avoid fights, you can never get to the boss. It's not possible. You're not fast enough. You'll run out of time before the month is over to, to get to the boss. So, like, it's it's a really cool way to, to uh, have your characters progress through stages. You'll go into a stage and you'll kind of start learning it and figure it out, figure it out slowly because your characters are slow. And then as they, as they get stronger and level up, they become faster. So you can go through the stage faster. Your battles will, will they'll be stronger so the battles will be faster. Your characters will be able to run faster so you'll be able to get deeper into the stage. And as you get to bosses, you know, you'll get to the boss the first time and you'll probably lose. You'll get beat and basically that'll end the month. But you'll know the path. You'll know how to get there and you'll know what you can do to get stronger to fight the boss. So it's kind of interesting. Also, like you have many different areas you can go to and some of them are time specific. So like certain times of the year, you can't go to places anymore uh, or they, they don't exist on the map anymore and it's such a good game in so many ways um, basically there are su such 
a little amount for me to complain about this game that it it's like uh easily one of my like top top games of all time and this company also um it's like um what is it mars yeah, i think it's just mars but i think there's actually like a, a company that is attached to, to mars in this um so i'm gonna check but they also made okay oh it doesn't show on here does it oh man let's see damn it i can't remember i have a bad memory It's, it's something, it's either something Mars and Mars something, but, uh, man, I wish I could remember it because, uh, they also made, uh, like another great RPG that nobody knows about, uh, is Linda Cubed. They also made that. They also made, um, Waga View Omio, which is like Pride of the Dragon Drates something something of the dragon pride of the dragon piece that's what it is the english name um but they have they make all these kind of like crazy game decisions that end up being awesome and um i love this developer and i i, I wish i could remember what it is because it's like um it might be Mars Age Tech. It, but I don't. I don't think it is though. That that seems wrong. I wish I could remember it off the top of my head here, but I cannot. And it's not written on the PSP version. It's like probably ported by Sony because like none of their uh, um, logos appear on here either. Um, but they, it it's not specifically those companies. It's like when the two companies that made this game are combined. They also made Linda Cube and this game and what about you and Omeo on the PS2? But uh, when they're combined to make a new game, it's always an awesome game, like 100%. Every one of their games that I've played has been awesome. There's another game on the PS2 that's uh, something about a crazed princess that I streamed once um but also made by them which is great so anyway that's gonna be it for my psp games but uh psp has a huge library of stuff so let me know what you guys thought um were your favorite games on the psp and we'll talk about it we'll uh see what you like see uh see how much a difference differs from my games and that'll be it i will uh Talk to you guys next time.